It's the most famous bull in the automotive world. A brand born from anger. Ferruccio Lamborghini was pissed off. And synonymous with high performance exclusivity. They've been known as the company that makes wedgie cars that go really fast in a straight line, and that's it. For over 50 years, Lamborghini has handcrafted high-end Italian supercars. The whole point of a Lamborghini is to look and to sound outrageous. Their most popular model is the best-selling Italian supercar in history. The Gallardo was the most successful Italian supercar of all time. The Gallardo absolutely was the car that put this company on firm ground. Now, the Gallardo needs to be replaced. So for the model, it comes once a decade for us. So it's a very critical time, a very demanding time. One misstep could spell disaster for the mark. We have only one bullet in our gun. And if we miss, then for a decade, we are wiped out. It's an Italian bullet called the Lamborghini Huracan. inspired silhouette blasts from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just two and a half seconds. It has a top speed of 325 kilometers per hour. One quarter the speed of sound and the weight of an entire automotive brand hinging on its success. The Lamborghini Huracan is the newest machine from the house of the raging bull one of the most famed and feared marks in the automotive world. Yet the brand owes its creation to two men and a myth. In post-war Italy, industrialist Ferruccio Lamborghini is making a fortune building tractors. It's a booming business in the agrarian region of Emilia-Romagna, a place where farming has ruled for centuries. By 1960, his company sells over 400 tractors per month. The wealthy industrialist buys a Ferrari 250 GT. But as the legend goes, the car has a problem with its clutch. Ferruccio Lamborghini bought a Ferrari. It broke. He went back over to Enzo, screamed at him, and said, you know, mm, I can build a better car. This was started in anger. Nothing looks like Lamborghini. Nothing performs like a Lamborghini. They're a very unique brand. Ferruccio Lamborghini immediately sets his gaze on Enzo's empire. In 1963, he purchases a large plot of land 25 kilometers from Bologna, Italy, in the town of Sant'Agata Bolognese, with only one goal, manufacturing cutting-edge Italian supercars. Sant'Agata is a little town that you definitely never would have heard of if it weren't for the fact that there are Lamborghinis driving all up and down these roads like maniacs. Three years later, in 1966, Ferruccio puts both Enzo and the world on notice. He introduces the Mura. The mid-engine two-seat V12-powered sports car is widely considered to be the world's first true supercar. They were very hand-built. These were kind of craftsman pieces. You were lucky if it started, and if, if it didn't explode into flames, bonus. In 1974, the brand takes the next step and reinvents the very supercar genre it helps create. Introducing an edgy, angular machine called the Countach. It lays the groundwork for all modern Lamborghinis. The Countach was described as uh, the holy desire to build a car with a single line, and the single line was the silhouette of this car. And we are still playing around this initial concept. While the brilliant looks and Italian V12 engine captivate auto fans, the machines are unreliable and poorly made. For the next 35 years, the brand lists from brilliancy to bankruptcy, while at the same time crystallizing a supercar mythology. Lamborghini, you know, has gone through a number of owners over the years. They've had big ups and downs in their financial situation. It's been really rocky. In 1998, Audi purchases the brand and dramatically changes its fortunes. The German automaker's first task is to re-inject life into the company. Lamborghini probably was closer to ceasing to exist than we'd like to think. In 2003, the masterstroke, the Gallardo. A 
smaller, lighter, less expensive V10-powered supercar. The Gallardo was, let me say, it's an entry-level supercar. The machine's lower price tag opens up new markets to the brand. The number of people on the planet who can afford these cars is pretty small. And you do need to be careful that not everyone who lives in those neighborhoods has one. One year after putting the Gallardo into production, Audi taps Stefan Winkelmann to be the company's new CEO. It was one year after the, the Gallardo was introduced. The company was smaller, we had less people. Finkelman's first order of business is to transform the automaker into a modern brand. Once the Gallardo happened, Lamborghini started making real cars. Under his watch, the company has gone from pretty dire straight to today, where they're stronger than they've ever been and selling more cars than they've ever sold. In 2002, the year before the Gallardo, the brand sells just 424 cars. After the Gallardo, they sell 1,305. It was a starting point. We all realized it at that stage. By 2007, the mark experiences a 467% sales increase, selling a record 2,406 machines. This is without question the most commercially successful era of Lamborghini. They've never been as financially stable. Financial stability keeps the brand on solid footing, but doesn't make them ordinary. In the real world, seeing a Lambo is a very rare event. In the entire world, there's less than 50,000 Lamborghinis. If there are 71 million cars produced in the year 2013, we had a bit more than 2,000. In its 50-year history, the House of the Raging Bull has built close to 30,000 cars. Not only was the Gallardo the most successful Lamborghini ever made, but in its 10-year run, it accounted for more than half of all Lamborghinis ever made. We kept it fresh and updated almost a decade. A decade is a very long time in the realm of the supercar, and cutting-edge tech ages. All the company was under pressure and there was several meetings because when you start in a new project, you try to understand what is needed. For Lamborghini, the stakes are clear and dramatic. The Gallardo keeps the brand in business. I imagine everyone at Lamborghini was very cautious. If its replacement fails, it spells disaster. With the task to be able to replace uh, the Gallardo, but to increase the success of the car and uh, say trouble from the beginning in order to think what can be better. Repeating the Gallardo's success is a tricky proposition. Second chances are hard to come by when you're replacing a legend.